Hello and welcome to Divi Modules. My name's David. In this video, I'll be giving you a quick overview of some of the new features that you can find in TableMaker 3. If you're new to TableMaker, I recommend that you first watch the previous TableMaker videos, as the information in those videos is still relevant and I won't be going through all of it again today. In today's video, we'll just be going through some of the main changes to TableMaker 3. For a full list of changes, please see the change log, which you can find on the Divi Modules website and in the links below. Whether you're new to TableMaker or not, I also recommend that you download the documentation, which has been completely rewritten and is now a lot more informative than it used to be. You can download the documentation from the Divi Modules website and from the links below. One of the first new features that you might notice in TableMaker 3 is that we can now add a title and description to our table. Once enabled, we can style the title and description under the Design tab. We can adjust the spacing, heading level, alignment, and all of the other font settings that are common in Divi. Adding a title and description to your table is not just a cosmetic feature, but can really help people who rely on assistive technologies like screen readers better understand the contents of your table. The table title can be positioned above or below the table, and it can also be hidden so that it's visible to screen readers only. The table description can also be positioned above or below the table and hidden for screen readers only. Those of you who are already familiar with TableMaker will know that when we have both a column header and row header, the overlapping top left table corner cells are automatically hidden. And this was done to allow the table responsive settings to function. One of the commonly requested features that we've had from TableMaker customers is to allow the top left corner cells to be re-enabled. And now, under the new table corner settings, we can do that. When visible, we can choose to style the top left corners as either part of the column header or row header. If we come back up now and give our table a column footer and row footer, and then come back down to table corners, we can see that there are now additional settings for also styling the other overlapping table corner cells. One of TableMaker's most popular features are its table responsive options. Previously in TableMaker, we could choose to display our tables as either blocks, or accordion at tablet or phone size. One commonly requested feature that we've had from customers is to be able to enable these features at desktop size. And now in TableMaker 3, we can. It should be noted, however, that if you do choose to display your table as either blocks or accordion at desktop size, your website visitors will never actually get to see the full table layout. Perhaps the most common feature request that we've had from customers has to do with the accordion toggles. Previously in TableMaker, the first toggle of the table accordion was always open by default, and many customers have requested that this toggle be closed. Now, under the design, table accordion toggle, we can set for all accordion toggles to be closed by default with this button here. And indeed, this is now the default setting for all table accordions. So if you have an existing accordion that you would like to remain open, you'll have to come in here and manually set that to open. And if there's a different toggle that you would like to be open by default, you can set that here. Now let's have a look at some of the new settings available under table stripes. Previously in TableMaker, we could add a horizontal stripe to our table, but the settings were fairly limited. 
Now in Table Maker 3, stripes can be a tint, pure colour, or blended colour, which works great for creating subtle colour effects. Stripes can be even or odd, horizontal or vertical, and we can set a different stripe direction at responsive size or choose to have none at all. Another new setting that's available in Table Maker 3 are the table hover effects. Just like with table stripes, the hover effect can be horizontal or vertical, and we can set a different hover direction at responsive size or choose to have none at all. The hover effect can be a tint, pure colour, or blended colour. Finally, I'd like to draw your attention to a change in Table Maker 3, which could affect the way some tables display after upgrading. Previously in Table Maker, column header text and row header text were automatically wrapped in header tags. One of the things that we've worked really hard on in Table Maker 3 is to improve its accessibility ratings, and we found that using header tags can prevent some screen readers from reading the table. And so in Table Maker 3, this setting is off by default. As I said, this could affect the display of some tables after upgrading. So if you find that it does, you can either come in here and turn this on, or better still, leave it off and manually style the text the way you wish it to look. As I said, this affects column header text and row header text. I apologise in advance if this change creates a little extra work for you, but we think it's an important change. And this, along with the other changes that we've made in TableMaker 3, means that TableMaker tables can now pass Google Lighthouse's accessibility audit. Well, that's it for this video. There are a lot more improvements and new features which have been added to TableMaker, which we haven't had time to talk about here. So please read the change log and download the documentation. Thanks for watching.